and welcome. My name is Jessica Rose. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some silver name tag jewellery that you can easily do from home. So let's get started with some making. There's lots you can do with this technique. So I'm going to show you how to make a name tag in silver so that you can put a lovely little name into solid silver. I'm also going to show you how to put in a little gemstone. So if you wanted to do like a birthstone to represent the person's name who you're talking about in your necklace. And then I'm going to show you how to do a little silver, simple silver textured charm as well. So these work really well as a stacking necklace, or you can also see over here, I've done them all together as a little charm on a bracelet. Obviously you can have them on your own, just the gemstone, just the charm, or just the, the tag, the name tag. So really versatile and let's get into the making. Let's talk a little bit about the tools and materials we're gonna be using for this project today. So you can see I've got some playing cards. We're not gonna be playing poker. They're gonna be used for rolling out the silver clay. So all of these pieces are made using uh, metal clay. Uh, which comes in different brands. There's art clay silver and there's precious metal clay. So today I'm going to be using a seven gram pack of art clay silver. And for anyone who's never used this material before, it's an amazing material. It's a clay based substance that contains millions of tiny silver particles and a little bit of water binder. So when we burn off the binder, we burn off the clay. Uh, all you're left with is solid silver, fine silver jewelry. So it's a wonderful way of making silver jewelry from home without too much kit and expensive materials. So the playing cards are going to be used for measuring the thickness of the piece. So we'll come on to that in just a moment. Underneath, I've just got a bit of Teflon sheet. So this is just to protect the back of my piece because I'm going to be rolling it out. Um, and then let's talk a little bit about the name tags. So what I'm using for the name tags are these alphabet kits and I find that they work really really well. I have experimented quite a lot with hand engraving in the clay and it always looks a little bit messy. I'm never quite happy with it whereas these always give that really lovely finish. So they come in a packet that looks like this um, and it's from Art Clay Silver and uh, it's got lots of Japanese writing on it but essentially if you google Art Clay Silver alphabet stamps this is what should come up and you get the packet with all of the stamps in and it also comes with these little um, sections to put your stamps into so you use the tweezers provided and you can put them in so you can see I've got a few in there you can also clip them together if you wanted to do a super long name or date or message um, but often I end up just using the little one and occasionally I use the slightly larger one as well. And that also comes with a set of tweezers. So I'm going to do the name Lola. So I've already put in a couple of them and I'm just going to go ahead and find the A that I need for the end. When you're putting your stamps in, if you look very closely at the stamps, at the top there's actually a bit of a gap. That's how you know that they're the right way around. So if you've got something like an S, which could be a little bit confusing, which way around to put it in, always make sure that the gap is at the top and not the bottom. And you'll see what I mean when you have a go yourself. So just literally pop that in. I can use my fingers as well. And so I've got my L, my O, my L, my A. It will look the wrong way around, but that's totally fine. Also, if you need to test these out before you do them in solid silver, in the silver clay, you can use a little bit of um, polymer clay or FIMO. You might have used that when you were a kid just to test out how to use a stamp because what we're going to do is actually push it into the clay or push it into the FIMO. So feel free to experiment a little bit. I'm just going to wiggle them around a little bit because some of the letters Sometimes they just need a little wiggle if they look like they're in the wrong place. But I'm fairly happy with that. So that's all ready to go. Whenever we're working with metal clay, we want to get everything ready beforehand. The last thing we do is open the clay because as soon as we open it, 
it starts drying out and the fresher it is, the better the result we get. There are lots of things you can do to look after it, but it's always best to just get that fresh clay. I also just wanna show you, I've got another set of letter stamp so you can see I've used two L's in that name lots of names have double letters so you may need to get an extra pack so this is the kind of top up pack where you just get some more letters so when you're ordering them little tip get that one as well and if you're going to do things like mummy or daddy where there's three letters you might need to get two of those so those are the letter stamps very cool things to work with and next up, I'm gonna have a look at, okay, what shape do I wanna cut out? So for this name tag, I'm just gonna go for a long, thin kind of oblong all the way around the piece. I do need to make sure, if I just show you on the sample, that I've got space for a jump ring, which is this circle loop at the top. So I need to drill a hole, which I'll show you how to do. So I wanna have a think about my design. Do I want to have a hole just at one side, like this one? Do I wanna have a hole at both sides, uh, like the necklace piece? So just plan that out in advance so that we know what we're aiming for. I think for this one, I'm just gonna go for a single tag and just have a hole at the top. And then all I use is a square cookie cutter. You can get these from any metal clay supplier. And I'm gonna use it in a moment to cut around the piece and just use all the sides to sort of choose where I want it. So sometimes it does take a couple of goes. Normally when I do a name tag, it might take me two or three goes, but the more I do them, the easier it gets to kind of intuitively know where to cut. And for our hole, which again, I'll show you in a minute, but we wanna get everything ready before we get it out. I'm just gonna use this little tool to make a pilot hole. So just to make a little hole into the piece and then I'm gonna drill it when it's dry a little bit later. If you don't have one of these, don't worry. You can literally just use a cocktail stick. It will work just as well. And I think they are all the things that I need. The final couple of things that I have are a roller. So this is just a bit of plastic tubing that I'm gonna to use to roll out the clay. So this is where you can see I've got five cards on each side. So I'm making my piece five cards thick. I would recommend a minimum of five cards thick for this project. You could go to six, you could go to seven if you want a chunkier piece, but a minimum of five cards thick, please. And just in this egg cup here, I've just got a tiny drop of olive oil. I'm gonna use that to oil and grease the area in just a moment. You can also use Badger Balm, which is a brand that's used a lot for metal clay. And it's always good practice to have a little bit of water nearby. So just got a little bit of water in case I need it. The final thing that I have at the ready is some cling film. Once I open the clay, and I've finished using the bit that I want to do. It's, it's silver clay, so it's an expensive material. So I wanna make sure that I don't sort of mess about with any. So as soon as I have finished, I am going to wrap it up in some cling film. So I'm just gonna grab a nice chunk of cling film here. and it's all in the preparation. So I'm getting it all ready so that once the clay is out, I don't need to mess about with anything. So that's just ready for me when I need it in just a moment. All right, I think we're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the packet. Don't be scared of the clay. It's um, a wonderful material to work with. As long as you have done your prep, there is no reason why it shouldn't go smoothly. And you know, if it doesn't go well the first time, we just do it again. So it's a very big packet for a very small actual piece that we work with, but you can do a lot with seven grams. The samples that I showed you at the beginning are all made from less than seven grams, all of those together. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the clay. I don't wanna touch it too much because I don't wanna get lots of grease in it from my hands. Um, but just before I get it out, I am gonna grease my area a little bit. So I'm just dipping my finger in the olive oil I'm just gonna place not too much because I don't want it super slippery, but just a little bit on to my mat, a little bit onto my roller. And I'm also gonna put a little bit onto my cutter, just being careful of your finger. So I'm just gonna dab it around the edges because that will just help it to come out if it gets a little bit stuck. 
Okay, great, now I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna place it down. Give it a nice roll. And go ahead and just double check I'm happy with my stamp. So when I'm placing my stamp down, you can see that there's the letters and then I've got a block behind it. So I don't wanna get the block into the clay. So when I place it down, I'm actually coming down with my eyes to level height. This L looks a little bit more protruding than the others, so I'm trying to get it flat. But maybe I'm being a perfectionist. Um, so I'm just going to place it down. So I'm checking with my eyes so that it doesn't go any further than it needs to. I'm just giving it a gentle wiggle and up it comes. Lovely. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to have a think about, okay, I'm going to put a hole next to the, the initial L. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space for that. So take your time with your placing. And don't go so close to the edge that, you know, there's nothing to work with. So I'm just going to push down. So I've done one of the corners. So as soon as I am done with a bit of clay, immediately I'm just going to roll it into a small ball and pop it in my cling film because I don't want that to dry out. Great, and as I lift that up, I can see I've got a nice corner on this side. So next I'm thinking I'm gonna go for the top. So I want to sort of match it as closely as I can. Nothing's perfect, but it's definitely good enough. Pop that clay back in with the rest. Actually looks quite nice like that. <laughs> a little bit of a different design, but I'm gonna go down a bit just to show you what I had intended. So I wanna leave a nice generous section for my jump ring. Don't make it too small. And I'm just gonna take that edge off. Lovely. Don't worry if the edges are a little bit rough. Um, we're gonna sand all of that before we fire it. So it's not gonna be like that but I'm really happy with that. So the final thing I'm gonna do is use my little tool to make a pilot hole where I want my jump ring to go. So right in the middle, um, not too close to the edge because it can chip off and not so close to the lettering that it looks out of sync. So now that is ready to be dried. So the next stage is I'm gonna put that onto a hot plate um, for about 20 minutes and that will dry it. So that will remove all the water. Really important that we do that before we do any torch firing. Don't worry about torch firing it. It's not as scary as it sounds and I'll talk you through the whole process. If you don't have a hot plate to dry it on, you can just leave it for about 24 hours, leave it overnight to dry naturally, air dry, um, or put it somewhere warm above a radiator um, in a uh, air drying cupboard, something like that, and it might take you know, about half a day or so, but we wanna make sure it's 100% dry. So that is our name tag. So I'm gonna pop that on the hot plate now. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to do the little birthstone charm. So that's just a little charm and we just pop a little birthstone into there. So the stones that we're using, they're gonna be, they're gonna be put through a lot of heat. So they need to be heat proof stones. So I'm using a cubic zirconia and it's a heat proof cubic zirconia. So make sure when you're buying them, if you buy it from a metal clay supplier, um, we have suppliers lists on our website at jewelersacademy.com. So do go and have a look. Um, just make sure it's heat proof because otherwise you don't want it to crack um, or discolor in your piece and then it's not a piece that you, you had designed. And I'm gonna use a little cookie cutter. So I'm gonna use a little heart one for this one. Again, these are all from metal clay suppliers. I've got my silver clay left over and I've added an extra card onto each side. So I've now got six cards, six cards thick. And this stone is three millimeters. Um, so six cards is gonna be able to allow me to push that stone into the clay. So I'm just gonna grease my area. I'm going to make sure I grease this cookie cutter nice and well um, with a little bit of the olive oil or the badger balm. 
just so that it comes out nicely. Regrease the bottom as well. You can put a little texture on the bottom if you want to. I'm gonna show you how to do a texture in just a moment, or you can just leave it as the Teflon, which is pretty plain. And I'm just greasing this roller too. So I don't need as much preparation for this one because I've got not got any name tags. I'm just gonna bring out my piece. If it's got loads of kind of lines in it, I'm just gonna smooth them a little bit. Just give myself a good start and roll it out. My cookie cutter is nice and small, so it should fit in well. I'm gonna find the bit of clay I find the least creased and aim for that. So now I'm ready to put my stone in. So I'm literally gonna find the pointed edge of the stone. So there's a pointed side and a flat side. I wanna put the pointed side facing down. Place it where I want it to go just very gently without getting any fingerprints onto the clay. And then using a cocktail stick or a little tool, I'm just gonna gently push it in. So what I'm aiming for with this is for the, the, the very top of the stone to be just under the surface of the clay. Because as the clay shrinks, the clay shrinks about 10 to 15% throughout the process of turning into the solid silver by the end, it's going to push the stone up a bit. So if it's already flush with the metal or a little bit high, it will just pop out. So to avoid it popping out, I'm just pushing it just below. So I'm looking from a side angle, I'm bringing my head down and I'm checking, yes, that's a little bit below. When I'm happy with the setting and it's nice and flat, there's no clay over it, I'm gonna go ahead and place my cutter on. I'm also thinking at this stage about where my jump ring is gonna go. Where am I gonna put a hole in my design just to make sure that it, I've allowed for that. So I'm gonna go at the side with this one, I think. So when I'm ready and I'm happy with the design, I'm just gonna push down. As always, first thing is get rid of the excess clay, pop it back in the cling film so it's ready to use. It won't last forever in the cling film. Um, you do need to look after it. There's a lot more on our website at jewelersacademy.com if you wanna learn more about working with metal clay. Now. It's a little bit stuck in there. It's looking lovely, but it is a bit stuck. So I'm gonna use the back of a tool, something that's not too sharp. It might be the back of a pen or a paintbrush. Very, very gently, just ease it out without, hopefully without making a mark <laughs> or much of a mark. Um, don't worry, it happens a lot. So I managed to push it out. I can see tiny, tiny mark, but what I can do with that, I've got my water nearby. I'm just gonna add a tiny drop on my finger. In fact, I want less than a drop, so I'm gonna take a bit off. And I'm just gonna run my finger over it, not getting any of it onto the actual stone because um, I don't wanna get any clay over the stone because remember that it's solid silver, it will end up looking like silver at the end. Um, if you do get any on the stone, just use a little cut cotton bud um, to get it off, that's totally fine. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I'm just gonna put a mark where my jump ring is gonna go. Remembering again, don't want it too close to the edge, not too close to the middle, just a nice happy medium. And I'm gonna drill a hole there in just a moment. So that is now gonna go on the hot plate to dry, just like my other piece, and I will get ready for firing it. And I'll show you how to do the final charm, which is a little textured charm next. 